Okay, we're going to talk about images. This gets way more complicated than it should be, but there's a lot of mistakes and issues that people have when they get started with this. So if you want to put an image in your HTML document, it's super easy. I actually prepared this ahead of time. You use the image tag, IMG, and then the attribute SRC, that stands for source, and that is set equal to the URL of your image. In this case, I'm using a local or a relative URL. I have this file docs.jpg saved on my desktop, which is where this file is. And if I load it up in my browser, there you go, it puts in a picture of my dogs, right? So that's pretty easy. Uh, you can put in an absolute URL, a relative URL, you just use the source attribute. Here's the problem. It's not that easy uh, if you're trying to put in a picture on your own. So let's flip over here. This is another picture of my dog, Hopper. Uh, I took this directly off my camera, so I just dragged it onto my desktop, and you can see it's called hopper.jpg. So it's in the same place. Uh, if I go back to my code and I say, all right, instead of the picture we have, let's do hopper.jpg. If I come back here and reload it, wow, I can see this tiny corner of it, and if I scroll, there's her face. Okay, why is that? Well, the picture is huge when it comes off your camera. You have a giant image, and web browsers always show images with 72 pixels per inch. So a pixel is basically 172nd of an inch. It's basically one dot on your screen, though screens have different resolutions now, so it can change a bit. Uh, but what you get off your camera is way, way too big. A common mistake that people make. They say, okay, well, we want to change this, so Let's use some of these other attributes I'm going to teach you. You can set the height equal to some number, like 500. That's a number of pixels. Again, there's 72 pixels to an inch. So this is going to be, you know, five or six inches high on an old school monitor. Um, you'll have to just kind of play around with these numbers to get a handle on what 500 is. So if we set that and we reload it, there, it looks great, right? The problem is the image file did not get any smaller. It's still four or five megabytes. So it looks smaller on the screen, but if you put this on the web, it's going to take forever to download, and you sometimes see it where it loads from the top down to the bottom, right? Uh, it's really bad. You don't want to do this. It doesn't change your image at all. It just changes how it appears on the screen. So it's okay to use these attributes, the height, or there's also a width attribute, but you don't want to use them if your image is too big. You actually want to change the size of your image. Okay, so how do we do that? If you have a tool like Photoshop, uh, which you guys can actually get because the university offers it, if you go to uh, DIT's website, you can download Photoshop. That has an option where you can change the size of the image. So you can see this is 45 inches high, 34 inch, uh, 45 inches wide and 34 inches high. Uh, pixels are more important to work with in HTML because you'll get a size, a sense of what the size is going to be on the web page. So if I want this to actually be 500 pixels high, I can do it like that. Save this image. It's zoomed out here, which is why it looks so small. And once I saved this, then I can get rid of this height attribute, save that file, and when I reload it, it looks the same because my image is now the right size and it's much smaller so it won't take forever to load. I will grade you down if you just take giant pictures and only put in the height attribute and don't resize them. Uh, if you don't want to get Photoshop, which is a pretty complicated program, you can actually use some online services. If you just search for image resizer, you'll get some. This is one that I'll link for you uh, where you upload your photo and you can resize it. So let's go back here. I'm going to undo what I did. So if my giant picture of my dog, I'm going to add that here. So now I've got it up here and do continue. It will upload the picture. And you notice how long it took to upload. That's how long it would take to show up on a web page. So you can resize your picture down here pick a percentage, or you could do a custom size where I could say I want the height to be 500 pixels. It gives us an estimated sign here. 
size here, uh, and then we can save it. And now we can view the image, and here it is. And this is a good tool in general. Uh, you can see this says .jpeg at the top, so we could just save this. Uh, but when it tries to do that, you see it tries to save as a picture.html. That's not what we want. So right click on the image, uh, yeah, that's control click on the Mac, and you can do save image as. And you can do this from any website, right click on an image and do save image as, and then that gives you the option to save the photo, which we can save on our desktop. So that's another option for you to do resizing. I'm gonna go back to Photoshop here, redo my image size, and save that. Okay, so now it looks fine, right? But here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna upload this to Terp Connect and we're gonna look at what happens. All right, so here I am in FileZilla. Um, I'm gonna go up to Jay Golbeck and then into Pub. If you remember, that's where we're putting these things. Um, on my desktop, I have images.html and hopper.jpg, which I will drag over here. And we can see that those transferred. So now let's go back to the browser and we'll do terp connect slash jgobeck slash images.html. And it doesn't work. We have this broken image kind of indicator on our page. But it worked when it was on our desktop. Right, so why doesn't it work when we have it uploaded? If I look at the code, it's exactly the same code that we had before. But here's the thing that you can do to debug. Click on that image, and it's when I try to click on it, it says 404 file not found. If you get that, make sure you uploaded hopper.jpg, but I did, there it is, so why isn't it working? And here's why, and this is a common mistake that people make. The file, if we look at it here, it's hopper.jpg, capital JPG. In my code, it's lowercase jpg. Now on my computer, that doesn't matter because Macs and PCs tend to be case insensitive. So they don't care what case you have it in. They're gonna just look for a file with that name. But Linux and Unix machines, which include most servers, are case sensitive with file names. So you cannot have them mismatched. In this case, my file, hopper.jpg, has a capital .jpg, so I have to make it match here. Every year, I have a lecture with students about this problem, and every year, they don't listen to me, and they say it works on their computer, and then they upload it, and it's broken. It can't be broken. You have to make sure it works, and to do that, you have to pay attention to the case. The way that I deal with this is that I make all of my files lowercase named all of the time. While we're talking about this, let's talk about other rules with naming files. There's stuff you can do on your computer that you just shouldn't do when you're uploading files for the web. Make sure that the case matches, of course. Also, you shouldn't put file, uh, spaces in your file name. So I could call this hopper space dog.jpg. That's not going to work most of the time when I upload it to a server because Unix and Linux machines don't like spaces in file names. So don't put any spaces in your file names and try to get in a consistent habit of making all of your cases the same. For example, just make everything lowercase. Uh, that makes it less likely that you're gonna make a mistake. So hopper.jpg with a capital J. If I save that, and then in FileZilla, re-upload images.html. We can see it connecting. Yes, I want to overwrite it. And now if we go back to our browser and reload, everything's fine. Okay, so case sensitivity, make sure your images are sized correctly. That's two common mistakes. Uh, let's try one other thing. So let's go to imdb.com just to kind of pick a random site. Um, and let's say we want to take this image and put it on our page. Actually, let's do this one. That's more interesting. So we can right click on it. And you could just do copy image location or you can do view image to see the URL. Let's do copy image location first, but I'll show you what happens if you do view image. You get this big long URL and that's the URL for the picture itself. So I already have that copied. I can go back to my file here and instead of using the relative URL, I can paste in the full URL like that. 
save it, and then let's just open a local version of that file. Then the picture appears in there. Now, this is kind of a rude thing to do, to take pictures from other people's websites and embed them in your page. Um, oftentimes people have to pay for the bandwidth on their website. And so if you have a really popular picture that you stole from their page, uh, it could run up their bandwidth. It's generally impolite. And it's also not great practice because if IMDB, for example, moves this image or renames it, then it's going to break on my page. So it's possible to do this. You can put in an absolute URL and as you see, it works just fine here. Uh, but it's kind of bad habit to do it like this. So know that you can do it, try it out, but don't get in the habit of stealing people's pictures and using the absolute URL. Let's put that back to my dog picture. Okay, uh, there's a lot of attributes you can use with images. One that I'm gonna show you here is border. Um, that's gonna put a border around your, pic your picture. You specify that in number of pixels and you can see it's showing up black here. It's going to show up in whatever the default text color is. And your images then appear just like anything else in your text. So I can say, this is my dog. And it just puts, this is my dog. And then the picture shows up right there in line with the text. Uh, if you want it to show up on its own line, you need to do a BR tag or a P tag like we've done before. So there we go. This is my dog. And then a line break and it shows up on the next line. Now, there's really sophisticated ways, obviously, that people handle images in their HTML documents. Uh, we're just going to stick with these basics for now, since this is a one credit course that you're doing. But there you go. Avoid those common mistakes. Make sure you resize your images to be proper web sized so they don't show up giant on the page. Don't just rely on the height attribute. Um, and let me give you one other thing. Sometimes things that people do is they'll specify the height. We know the height's 500, but uh, then they'll do like the width equals 500 because they want it to be square and then they get a squished image like this. This is a pet peeve of mine when people squish or stretch their images. I think it looks terrible, it's unprofessional, and it just shouldn't be done. If you want a square image, crop your image to make it square instead of squishing it to make it look bad. Uh, if you just specify either the height or the width, it will keep the ratio the same, so it will scale the image. But if you specify both, it will fit it in exactly those proportions and it will stretch it and make it look terrible. So don't do that to try to change the shape of your image. If you want a square image and it's not square, crop it. You can use that tool that I showed you. Uh, you can use Photoshop to do that. Make it the size that you want. But don't give me any squished images. I will take points off for that because it really bothers me. So there you go, the basics of images in HTML.